Now we just arrived at Kodiak Island at the airport here. And here's a giant brown bear. This was actually world record SCI at one time. Jack King, who's an outfitter on the island, took it with a rifle. We're hoping to get one similar to that. We'd probably take one smaller. I'd hate to have one at this kind of scenario. <laughs> that close, looking down. The coastline has many bays and inlets with a rugged, mountainous interior. No point on the island is more than 15 miles from the sea. Kodiak's landmass covers over 5,000 square miles and is over 100 miles long. With a population of approximately 5,000 brown bears, there's no better place to hunt the legendary Bruins. taking place on the southwest end of the island in Dead Man's Bay with guide Tom Kirstein. Well, Tom. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Good Welcome to Dead Man. Finally got here a little bit day later, so, but... Uh, yeah, Dead Man's Bay was pretty rough yesterday. The weather was just, it was awful, and uh, yeah. but we got a glorious day today, and... and uh, Glad you're here. We've got 15 days. We should be able to have enough good weather to get some runs at them. So how, yeah. how have the conditions been? Uh, we've had four days of nice warm rain, and, um, you know, we've, the numbers of bear sightings that we've had uh, in the last week has really increased. You That's know, what I was kind of hoping for when I timed it like that. I've been on some early hunts where it's a little sketchy, and with the bow, it's hard to get around the snow, and it's, you need a little bit more opportunity, too. The more bears, the better. Well, I guess what we'll do is yeah. uh, begin the hunt here. Well, let's get the party started, buddy. Yeah. Got our, got our gear set up. I'm looking forward to it. Alaskan law prohibits any hunting on the same day you fly, so the boys take to the sea for some fresh fillets. Two nice nine-foot class bears are spotted. Since it's the first day, the decision is made to shop around a little more. There's no shortage of water sources as the melting snow runs down to meet the sea. There's a really good bear right there. Just below that ridge right there, coming down. See that patch of snow right there? Yeah, right by those rocks? Yeah, he's dropping down right there. That's a heavy bear. Oh my God. The 13th bear spotted on the first day of hunting exceeds the size limitation, and then some. Yeah, that's a, that's a big bear. That looks like a, he'd probably go in the 10 foot class. Yeah, he looks bigger than the other bears we've been looking at. Yeah, see the stride he's taking? Yeah, he's carrying himself a little different. Look how his neck's yeah. sticking out. Yeah, that's a big wow. one. He's coming down pretty quick. I think we should head over and uh, try and catch him when he comes down right there. He looks like he's headed towards the beach there. I think the wind will be right when we get there? Yeah, the wind's coming out of the you know out of the canyon there. I think it'll be fine. God, he's massive. He's got a beautiful hide. <laughs> it just doesn't look rubbed at all. Yeah, coming out of that high country, they must be just coming out of the Danning areas, huh? Seems yeah. like a lot of the bears we've seen today have been up in that snow. Well, they've been dropping, you know, it's just that time of year they're coming out. Or but all the feed's down by the beach anyway, so it looks like he's getting a little hungry, huh? Yeah. I think we got to get after him. Our team hit the beach downwind of the bear's last sighting and soon spot him in the alders. A hasty hunting strategy is planned. I think he'll come out right there. You know, he's going to work his way through and probably come out right out of this corner. Okay. If we can sneak through there, it'd be, you know, yeah, we've got the best wind condition. It's just a matter of brush. Let's do it. The 
The brush is thick, but the big boy picks up a little movement. Go ahead. He's looking this way. He is the alpha male and fears no other bear in his territory. At 75 yards, Bob takes off his boots and crawls toward the massive carnivore one foot at a time, being careful to watch for any head movements. Bob decides to lay low for at least 15 minutes to assure the bear that no threat is present. It takes half an hour to close the distance to 40 yards. The huge grizzly rolls over on his side and is now facing away. Bob seizes the opportunity, takes to his feet, and proceeds to a position that will give him the angle necessary to make a clean kill. Moments get tense as the 1,000 pound plus killing machine flares in the direction of the cameraman and guide. Bob, downwind of the bear, remains motionless and blends into the alders, waiting for the shot to present itself. When everything is right, the shot sequence is automatic. At 18 yards, it's a matter of seconds before the bear nearly runs over Bob as he passes by at an uncomfortable 20 feet. That was incredible. That was... <laughs> oh, man. That was hard. Well, I got in the angle. I was trying to pick a spot where I thought his, his vital was because I didn't want to hit him in the shoulder and I didn't want to hit him too far back, obviously, on a bear that big. And I'm thinking, okay, on a normal animal, this far back might be enough, but on that thing, it's not. He's huge. He's like 10 foot or something, huh? Oh, yeah. He's, he's a, oh, that's a dandy. I saw him starting to get up on his front end and just gave me the perfect angle. I just got that pin, okay, steady the pin and smooth release. Drove it right in the perfect spot, man. <laughs> then he started lumbering kind of towards me and I thought, oh God, is he going to run it? Because I knew I was between the brush and him and I had a black bear almost run me over one time just trying to get away. And he went rubble and he flopped over right in there, not even 30 yards. Yeah, he's That's uh... what I wanted to do. <laughs> I, I didn't want to put you, he's I know you got, got a him. wife and a kid. As you can tell, this is a gigantic bear. This bear, Tom estimates, to be 10 foot plus. It's probably 1,000 pounds in the spring. They're going to be about 30% heavier, 13, 1,400 pounds maybe in the fall after they're all fed up on the salmon. I mean, you can tell the head is just immense. The claws, see these claws are four or five inches long, perfect shape, ivory tips on them. Man, ominous weapon, especially coupled with these big arms. I mean, they're just so powerful. You can't even believe how thick they are. This is like 28 inches around in this area. That's why they have this big hump too on the shoulder. I guess it's for digging. It's that extra power that they they use for for digging up things and getting at marmots and different stuff. Digging their dens, you know, when they when they den up in the in the fall. That's what differentiates the black bears from the grizzlies. A lot of different reasons, but that's one of them too. That big hump that everybody always distinguishes. Hair on this thing is just unbelievable. What a dream come true! I just can't even believe it. Yeah. I mean, how do you measure them? You know, we get them with the measurement on it, you know, and you've got the square on, on the hide. I measured the length and the width, which is a nose all the way to the tail, and then the, the middle claw to middle claw, the width, and divide that by two, and that gave me the square of the bear, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that came out to 10 foot, four and a half inches. Well, Tom, that's one way, you know, sizing up the bear. The other way, for the record books and stuff, they actually score the skull. Why don't you what, explain on that, how that works? What I did is I took the calipers, measured the length and the width, added those two together and got the total. And the uh, length measurement was 17 and 5 16ths, 
and the width measurement is 11 and 3 16 which is 28 and 8 16 and the world record is what 28 and 6 or 28 and 7 um, right now it's 28 7 16 so unbelievable right now in the in the green stage you know this uh, has to go through the drying period but right now it's a world record and uh, depending on if it shrinks or not that's exciting <laughs> you've got a you've got a tremendous trophy here so that's amazing incredible I've well, been happier with a lot smaller one, but I sure feel blessed to have taken this bear. But tell me a little bit about the different, you know, the hunting program, you know, on the bears and stuff, and how it benefits, you know, the whole population. Well, the island you know, is roughly 5,000 square miles, and best guess estimates was 3,500 to 5,000 bears. We almost have a bear per square mile. Some areas, they're, you know, they're a lot denser. They're, there's more than a bear per square mile here. And uh, so it's, it's an important thing that we maintain a good hunting program here because it's a healthy thing for the bear population. Their natural predators are just themselves and, you know, and, and people to manage them. But they, uh, if you don't take care of that, it's gonna, you know, you end up with a population of bears that uh, becomes unhealthy. Well, these big boars too, they, they tend to like chew on the cubs and some of the females. Well, We've that's seen a, that happen and yeah. shot quite a few of them off kills, it sounds like, of their own kind. Yeah, it's, a, it's very natural and they, they do prey on each other quite a bit. And the old males, they become very, very uh, heavy predators and, and so it's a good thing to harvest. We harvest a spectrum of bears on the island, you know, but uh, we try and concentrate on taking just the male bears if possible. And that's the healthiest thing to do. What's a bear like this way you know, in the spring, just coming out of hibernation time? In the springtime, they'll weigh 1,000 to 1,050 pounds. And then in the fall, after they've been feeding all summer, you know, they'll gain about 35%. And he should weigh 1,350, 1,400 pounds in the fall time, so. Dream come true, Tom. Yeah, it really is. Beautiful trophy.